Testing the recording. <clears throat> Got a bit of music on in the background. Don't panic, that's going on. Sat here calmly, seven minutes to five. Probably leave the recording on now. All is well. Welcome, everybody. How are you all? Hello. 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 Hi, John. Hi, yeah. Hi, Darren. Hi, Richard. Hi, Sean L. Who is the groom to be? I thought you were already married, Sean. Yeah, I should change that. <laughs> is that from a few weeks ago? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were getting married again. Congratulations. Yeah, it was so good. We're just going to keep doing it. I think, it's, I think it's more than the honeymoon. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, probably time to move it on to your next kind of uh, mindset. So where you are now, we'd be interested in what you change the title to. So thanks, everybody, for joining. I'm quite keen to uh, start promptly. We are waiting another couple of participants. If you're new to Zoom, I don't know how familiar you are with it. It's a really good piece of software. Um, and there's a couple of things I just want to share with you. In the uh, top right of your screen, where it gives you an option to view, where there's a grid of dots, there's a gallery view. Um, and also um, another view, which I can't remember. But there are two, two views which you can do. And what, I, what you can do is choose either of those. And what I'll do as we go through and I ask you to share, I'm going to uh, snapshot or focus a spotlight on whoever's sharing at that time. And this is all about sharing. So the difference in this webinar, the surprise is, it's not one of those webinars where you turn up and you just listen and you just kind of have a cup of tea and a biscuit what i'm going to do is ask you to do things as we go through i want to test the software a little bit on the right hand side you'll see a chat window and in there you have a place where you can indicate using the participants area uh, any form of yes no hands up go slower, go faster. If some of you would just try clicking on some of them, just so I know you're using the software hmm. over here. What's this bit, Martin? In the right-hand side, there's a chat window, I uh, believe, with, oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. with a participant. If just in there you do some form of indication, put your hand up or flag or something of that type. Fantastic, I've got an icon type. Hello, yeah. no flags, etc. Right, I think that's in the participants section where the indicators are. So uh, Richie's got his hand up. Richie, do you mind sharing how you did that to others? Sean's got his hand up. Am I there? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me, everybody? Yeah. So yeah. In, the, um, in the participants bit, uh, if you do a click on the participants bit at the top. Oh, you there we go. Yeah. Put hand up, lower hand, yes, no, go faster, go slower. And bizarrely, cup of tea. Not really know what that's for. Yeah, oh, maybe that's, that's I'm on a break. Maybe I've I gone think that's you offering us a cup of tea. Uh, All right. It says need a break when you hover over it. Yeah, and you'll see as we're talking, depending on the view that you've got up, the uh, the view of the, the big window in the centre kind of follows the speaker around. And what I'll do as we go through is if you've got something to share, which I want you to do because it's that kind of thing, uh, I will kind of spotlight you and you'll become for that period the, uh, the person who's showing something. And the thing I want you to show, a uh, couple of things. One, initially, um, I just want you to tell me or indicate if you've got the prop that I sent out uh, by PDF. I just wanted to show me. It looks a bit like this. Uh, it's actually on the background of me. If you've got that and printed out, just hold it up to the camera. So there's Darren. So for instance, Darren's showing that. So I'll spotlight him. There's Darren. So as Darren fills it in, what we're going to do is go along and we'll use a few examples from that. I've got two Sean's on the uh, call, I, I just noticed. So that's interesting. And so I'll refer to Lidl and uh, Sankey, respectively. And as we go through, so just to get us started, uh, whilst I do a little intro, can we just, um, what I want you to do is to start interacting and writing something on the the big picture paper so just behind me here at the top right where you can see i put your big pick could you just put a business name or, or some a business that you either care about you work for or you're working with and we're going to use that as a subject um of the 
uh, the session and what you're going to do is you're going to follow along with my prompting with your business and what we'll do is we'll use that as a, as a something to share amongst ourselves so just in the top left just do that and if anyone's finished as a kind of advanced user could we just go around and just a quick name sector and maybe a question that you'd like this webinar to answer Could we start with Sean a little yeah sure yeah so uh, sector is uh, mindfulness mental health first aid leading into uh, uh, well-being and um, what I'd like this webinar to answer, I want to see this in process. I want to see the process in action so I can understand the it, it working in its time scale. Excellent. Thanks, Sean Little. Sean Sankey. Uh, so, Sean Sankey, my sector, I guess, is e-commerce. And the question I'm looking to uh, for this webinar to answer is how good is Martin's script? <laughs> Thanks. Oh, no pressure there then. And that assumes <laughs> I have a script. And um, of course, I have a script. Whether I stick to it is a totally different matter. Okay. And uh, Richie, how about you? Uh, so, my interest is webinars, and it's ch basically checking how Martin carries on with this webinar, making notes on how he's doing it so I can feedback. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Um, who else have we got? <clears throat> Who hasn't introduced themselves? Me. Darren. Darren. Hello. Sec name, sector, question to answer. Uh, I am Darren and I am in design and I'm interested to see how your template works in this scenario. Excellent. I wonder why I you want to know that. That's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, we'll move on from that and not let you answer. Richard Abrahams, introduce yourself, please. Can you hear us, Richard? Okay, Ryan, how are you? Okay, we'll move on. Gareth, how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing really well, thank you, Martin. Good. Name, sector, and question you'd like the webinar to answer. Yep. Yeah, um, so, uh, so Gareth Gadd, work for a company called Compliance Compendium. The sector we're in is called Regulation Technology. So we have a platform as a service for the regulation industry for GDPR and all that sort, sort of wonderful stuff. And we aim at SMEs and charities. Uh, the main question for me is involvement for people who are part-time in your business. Um, to me, that's always a, a challenging thing. And uh, I just feel you have to give people leeway, but you still want to engage them as well. Okay, excellent. And what, what are, one of the themes I want to bring out is all of the demonstration that we do. I know it's quite difficult to imagine this, but I want you to imagine that these prompts and these kind of conversations are not ones we would have with ourselves in our heads. That's not actually the point of the big picture. It's all about joining the dots. Mm -hmm. One of the themes that Gareth, Gareth has touched upon there is that these are the kind of prompts that allows people and employees who want to contribute and I believe have a real will and a determination to want to have a voice in the organization but they're not given that voice because the opportunity is not there these are the kind of prompts and the tools via the kits the workshops and the programs that we offer these are the kind of techniques and accessible uh, tools that we provide to bring change and business improvement and all of those great things when you get a group of people together with a common will and a kind of group think and a ground truth and that's what big picture does for people so let's get into the demonstration um in the top left how have you got on with the name in the top left has everybody had a go at that mm -hmm. yeah fantastic would anyone like to share what they've put in the top left just wave it up to the camera so i can see it okay what have you got sean thank you mc amazon fantastic so nice code name there so what we're going to do is sean follow that one through for the uh, the example I'm going to give. So at the top of the page, what I'd like you to do is, I'm going to give you an example of this. We start with big picture. I'm going to give you an insight, and we haven't got much time, so I will move at pace. And you can always pick me up at questions by leaving a comment in the chat window. Um, what I'd like to do is to start at the top of the page, and you'll see a space there for 
um, space for the purpose or what the business is here for. So when we're talking about this business that you care about or that you're involved with or you've got some form of interest in, at the top of the page, I would like you yeah. to actually just complete a little line. And I'm going to give you an example from mine. So for big picture, for instance, if you look at the top of the page here, as if I mentioned in the intro, we help people. I'll just spotlight myself. Um, what we do is we help people join the dots for lasting and measured change. And whilst you consider that for, the, for your own business that you're thinking about, uh, the purpose and the vision of a business is so important. I was coaching a young lady the other day to go to an interview for a business to business sales position, and she was asking what might come across as something she would demonstrate her understanding. And I said, always jump back to the vision and the purpose. You get a real grasp for the measure of the the conversation when you're looking at the that that one line, or it could be financially driven. It could be values driven, it could be quite vague and wishy-washy, or it could be really specific, and immediately you get a sense for the measure of the kind of conversation. And of course, everybody comes at it from different perspective. No answer is right or wrong. Uh, in my belief, some visions and purposes are better than others, and there's a difference between them, and you can go off and do a whole creative exercise around it. But what I'd like you to do is just think off the top of your head and write in uh, what that is and at the right hand side you can see with big picture I've got two core values which we cherish massively which is around uh, truth and sharing useful truths with employees and people who care about the business and also turning that into productivity and we use the big picture template to not only identify the purpose and the vision but also to the right hand side the the core values. As if one day, is anyone able to share what they've got there? Would anyone like to shout up and give me an example of what they've got to just to contrast with what I've got? Anyone like to wave it at the screen or give me? Oh, Sean's given me one. So this is uh, so for my business or the client. It could be whichever business you're focusing on, Sean. So think about one and stick to that all the way through. Uh, it's a good question, it. if it wasn't clear, uh, try and write it for the business that um, you are focusing on. Anybody else has got a good example they could share with us, just a one-liner for purpose or vision? What have we got, Sean? Bring first-class office products to people and businesses that care about environment. Okay, interesting. So you've got a product offering there and a environmental um, insight or kind of need and drive. And I'm just wondering what came first. Did those two things come at the same time for that business or did one drive the other? It was thinking about the customer first and then dialing it back to the product. So it's thinking about, okay, what's, what, are, what are trends that are important to people and therefore what can we as a business offer? Um, to folk that care about that trend or are involved in that trend. Nice, and I suppose you could take that trend and change the kind of product offering or wrap service around it. The mm. young lady I was talking about the other day worked for Dyson, and when I spoke to her, she looked a bit blank initially when I spoke to her about what the, I guess Dyson, with them being an innovative company, have a real good handle on their um their drive and apparently it's movement of air which makes perfect sense when she said that it's about movement of air so whether it's hand dryers hoovers uh or whatever else they do anything to do with movement of air that's the term that they own and that's what they do anybody else um want to share their one yeah. liner at the top yeah the uh, kind of vision thing is really boring because it's just Offering the best value premium product to protect small businesses and charities under GDPR, which wow. is a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, which, which, which will make most people fall asleep by the time I got down to the third word. But the key values, though, are value for money and fair dealing. Yeah, and and that's the underlying uh, values of the business. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? One more before we move on. I'll go if you want. Yeah, go for it, Sean. Okay, so um, businesses that uh, are helping people and organisations become happier and more productive. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the values will be uh, progressive, uh, progressive and open. Okay, nice. It's interesting there what, what you've done and when I've got a kind of cl compliant uh, group, if that's the right word, what, they tend, what I tend to find is, and I'm putting yourself now in a situation where you're facilitating a group, it's interesting we tend to mirror the way the question is asked and the kind of form. So what you've done there is kind of copied the, uh, copied the format that I've used in yours and that's what happens. And that, I think that's a good example where um, I'm not being funny, Sean, but you're informed, you're in this kind of sector, you know that, but we're all human. And if you were to put this in front of someone who didn't feel as comfortable as you did, they equally access the product and the conversation using the tool and as a, as a kind of third party prop to get to where they want. So it's interesting. We like to mirror and copy the, yeah. uh, what, what we do. I don't know whether you see that in your own work, but, but I certainly do. And this is about giving people an accessible framework in which to have their own voice. Yeah, there's, there's two ways of influencing that, Martin, and I've, and I've actually used them as well in uh, when we've done like sort of big workshops and I used to be consulting. Yeah. Where it's, um, you can squeeze and expand time frames. Uh -huh. So if you if you really want to railroad people, you give them very little time to think and then they will tend to replicate what they see in front of them. If you give them a lot of time and a lot of free space, they come up with something absolutely totally different. And, yep. and, and as I say, as a consultant, I've deliberately manipulated that. Yeah, absolutely. I think we had a chat a while ago, Gareth, about convergent and divergent thinking. Right. And just reading a book about um, ants and the way they work all together as separate little entities, but it's when they come together that the magic happens, uh, which is a term, and I think there's a little link there. Really keen to move on. Loads of conversation topics. When we get into big picture for length of time longer than this, there are so many hooks to go off left, right, and up and down, but I can't go into them now, but that's maybe something for a follow-up conversation. So I just want to crack on to the next, uh, the next piece. So um, thinking about the purpose at the top and those values, I want you to think next about the, uh, the customer, uh, who the customers are for this business. So on your right-hand side of the... Um, which side is it? Yeah, they know where this customer symbol is here. If you just look at where I'm pointing here, this is the customer symbol on big picture. So this is this yellow uh, little fella here. And underneath you'll see there's some white space. And what I'd like you to do in the white space is write and identify the customer that you have or this business has. It might even be a business that you're making up, who knows? I wasn't uh, clear on that. And I'm just gonna give you an example if it helps uh, for your big pick, which is an example of we're a business to business. We sell programs, workshops, and kits to other businesses. Although we are always mindful of who the people are within that business we're selling to and also who the end user is. Uh, we're certainly towards a people first type, type of organization, certainly values based and one element to the uh, description I added recently is willing to listen and it was that third one that really allows us to focus on the customers that we might have so I'd just like you to have a go just in the same way as I've written under the customer here I'd like you to just write under and I'm just going to take one example um, one example of this so if anyone's done that and have got a clear one line if they're willing to share that would be fantastic just speak up the software helps us it's just like being in a room so just jump in and just maybe someone who hasn't contributed so far who would be a customer for your business okay quiet anybody <laughs> Jump in, jump in, please. Has anyone got a non-business to business uh, where there's a kind of consumer at the end? Uh, kind of not a business, not an organization. Well, I've got specific scenario then. Personas around office managers, facilities managers, entrepreneurs, consultants. So I've just listed out the kind of buyer types for the kind of stuff that... Yeah, Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, Sean. And on that, on that side of the page, um, the left-hand side, mm -hmm. because I'm looking at the camera, I do know the difference between the left and right. It's like <laughs> Jimmy does. Cricket. I need my Jimmy Cricket wellies. Uh, but the idea is you do a bit of customer segmentation on that, on that left-hand side of the page, which it sounds like you can list them, but then you can start grouping them. 
Mm -hmm. so I think this is a point I want to bring out. Big picture appears simple, and that's why it's accessible. But behind it, there are all these avenues you can go off on. So the customer segmentation piece would go on on this left hand side. So you can start grouping, segmenting, developing your personas, etc. I wouldn't necessarily use those words with employees if I was facilitating a conversation with them, but it does give you a nice hop off point. But I'm going to move on. I'm only going to take one example of that because this is about triangulation as an example, a big picture. We've got the purpose at the top of the page. We've got the customer to the left. And then there's this space in the middle of the page, which I move here, as you'll see, where the customer comes along and actually ends up in this little bit here. What I want you to do is to box that off and just describe for this business what the... Uh, I might call it in my day job a value proposition, but that's far too long a grander word. It's about the, the, the products and services, what that business actually delivers. And if I show you an example, um, I can show you how simple it can be. So I just move to the side here. Uh, we've got the deliver programs, workshops and kits for big picture. So that's where we have uh, I have an example there, so I'll just move to the side so you can see it. Hopefully that's clear on the screen. And what I've done, which is a bit of a big picture trick when you're in conversation, when you, people are expressing themselves, it's good to write in the notes. And this is a very small version of big picture template. Write in the notes, but then box off the section of the template that you're actually completing. So if it's not clear from looking at it, you've got deliver. We deliver programs, workshops, and kits. We deliver them to those customers who we've identified on the left-hand side. And we are always mindful of what we're doing because we have a clear purpose and vision at the top of the page. And I'm continually, as the creator and owner of Big Picture, aligning those three and the whole business strategy is based on that. I'm intrigued what uh, products and services you might have. Was anybody willing to offer them what they've got? How was that easy or hard to fill in? Just, just reflect on how that was for you. So Martin, I don't know, can you hear me now? Yeah, Please. Richard, hi. I've been trying to unmute you. I'm delighted you've found your microphone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there, but that's technology for you. Uh, I mean, for me, this one was really easy. I mean, the company name is TLC. I'm in the training business. Yeah. Um, what do we deliver? We deliver training, learning, and coaching programs, TLC. So, the, yeah, that was quite a nice, easy one for me to fill out on that side of things. Yeah. <coughs> and in, in terms, oh, blimey, that's nice and dark. Uh, that's what we do. <laughs> apart, apart from your mic and your light not working, Richard, you're absolutely on it with regards to technology. Um, one thing might be interesting, Richard, is that you've got a clear view of that and i think by definition the people we have attending this webinar will if you think of people who you might work with in organizations who are not necessarily on any kind of senior leadership team or in a management position how the clarity that they might or may not have uh, would reflect in the kind of conversation like i find it's a great leveler i don't know if you've got a kind of anecdote or experience where that knowledge and clarity isn't as great as you might want or need to achieve? Um, I don't know. It, it's normally fairly clear. Sometimes the only thing that isn't clear is what we deliver because we're around leadership programs and change programs. And sometimes people might think you, you know, we might do health and safety and those sorts of things. So that's the only time we have to be really clear. Is I think we use the term soft skills and I think most people pick up on that. Yeah. Now, and then there's probably uh, some kind of link across to the work that Sean Little does there with the mindfulness. I think there's a cross, just from my knowledge of your backgrounds, I think there's a little bit of a crossover there, which would, might be an interesting link to explore. But, but let's crack on. Now, this is where we get um, quite interactive. You'll notice in the bottom left of your page here, uh, you have some symbols. And all we've done really so far with big pictures, scratch the surface, aligning the purpose, the customer, and the products and services that we deliver. And what I'd like to explore now to just give you an insight into the kind of experience that you and your colleagues would have in the room using Big Picture, is if you just tear off, I can see some of you are already taking the symbols off. They're, they're intended to be uh, taken off the page, so just tear them off or cut them off. 
Uh, what I'd like you to do is just just uh, join with me in a little bit of experience, a bit of making and doing, and that's how we like to learn together by experiencing together. This symbol here is the team symbol. This red symbol here, and you'll see you've got a little version of that on your uh, page. And what I'd like you to do is to just tear it off, and I'd just like you to think about. A uh, key person in that business, and it might be yourself. Um, it could be uh, somebody who you have uh, worked with in that business. And I'd just like you to place it somewhere on the uh, on the page. So you just tear it off and just plonk it down. And and if you've got it on the table in front of you, just write underneath who that person is to you. It could be you if you work in the kind of delivery area, you'll see that on the uh, the gaps around delivery, you've got areas of the template for marketing and sales, for partnerships, for management and administration, and also customer care. So you can actually break out of that box and start identifying key people and stakeholders in different parts of the business. So if you just do, do that for me and, and give that a whirl, and if you've done that, if you're willing to share and Maybe describe that. I probably won't be stuck on, so you might not be able to wave it at the camera. But maybe just describe who you've who you've identified in your business. Well, I've, I've identified myself. Okay. And but but I've put myself in the marketing and sales because at the moment I've gone back into business development phase. Interesting. And is that a bit of a cycle? Do you find? Um, yeah. On in terms, you've gone back into, and often big picture we pick up a pick up and really attuned facilitators and practitioners pick up on little words you've gone back into. So that's yes. you you deliver and you flip back into marketing the sales and you're aware when you're doing that. Exactly. Yes. And that self awareness, I guess, is back to that um e myth thing about michael Gerb about getting out of your own way doing everything in the business so again yeah. really good conversation topic but i'll move on i want i want you to do the same with this symbol you've also got a measure symbol which is the black cross and I, that's measuring something within the business so similarly to the team uh, symbol if you just use that measure symbol and place it somewhere on the business that makes sense to you and you can see from the way I'm doing it, I'm not being prescriptive. I've given you in a framework in which to work. So what I like you to do is to start connecting things to do together. On the example I've got on the, um, the screen, this is a very real example for Big Picture, which is um, I've partnered with uh, Marketing Optimist for my marketing effort, who are my red uh, team, key people there. And Webinar Bums on Seats is going to be the, the key performance indicator for that. And you can see where I've placed it on my customer journey. If I was having a conversation about big picture development, that makes perfect sense to me to place it in the marketing area, kind of box that off a relationship with the customer. Anybody willing to share a kind of measure, a key performance indicator or a metric for the business that they're talking about? I think it's the same for many businesses these days. Website visits, and all the various nuances of where things come from and all that sort of stuff is a measure and behavior on a website is a measure and then the other one is a conversion percentage yeah from that. So, yeah know, that's, and, that's <clears throat> excellent gareth and, and um it reminds me on the, the 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 big picture the product on the the versions of the product that we use in the room and not this mm -hmm. example we have five metrics or measures placed out across the business which helps prompt people for thinking about the key measures which are your numbers of leads number of conversions your margins your average sale and then the number of transactions so these are little tricks and patterns and we love patterns in big picture because they help prompt good thinking and good conversations yeah. uh, so measures is a good example and where i've used it i'm going to crack on to the next stage as time is time is upon us we have about eight, well, we have eight symbols within Big Picture, but the four I'm going to introduce you here, we have the challenge and the opportunity symbol. And probably it drops out at this point. You've kind of got an idea and an insight into the technique. What mm -hmm. I would be asking a participant, in this case yourself, gaining an insight into Big Picture is, where are the big challenges within the business and of course there's a read across to opportunities but it doesn't always have to be a direct link from challenge to opportunities 
and because uh, we've used, uh, well, in my example, I've used the marketing. I think what I go on to do here in the example is actually I've gone along the customer journey a little bit and explored that, and that's what I'd be using the template to suggest to my participants or an employee team, an organizational development piece would be about how is it from um, a challenge for me is how from a webinar such as this in a limited time I can actually demonstrate the full experience of big picture because generally it is in the analog space in the moment um, and not online through a webinar and slightly linked but not quite is the fact there's an opportunity within big picture to have the app which is a, a scalable product and that's further down the customer journey once we've done things in the moment we would then jump to the app and put the content in there and allow teams to collaborate remotely is anyone willing to share uh, let's jump straight to opportunity any any opportunity that anybody would willing to share for the business that they're talking about I've gone for uh, referrals from existing clients. That's something that uh, is, is something that we I, I usually don't like to do. Go back and ask people for business, but it's obviously the the easiest thing to do. So that's jumped straight out at me, which is something that I have I didn't even think of, and I'm just going after new clients at the minute. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And on the big picture template, if I just try to point up here on the actual template on the product ghosted out on the page. We have the referrals piece, so we have the customer journey shooting along and then back up and over the top. And what that allows us to do, we, what I find is it's about power of suggestion. So by giving people a template that has reasonable things on it that they can access, by suggesting in the grayed out template things like referrals and measures what people are willing to do if it's reasonable and presented in a right way with the right voiceover and facilitation is they will then engage with that and start to think about referrals and because they accept the pattern and because they accept the language and hopefully the way it's being presented they'll see referrals in a different light and that's part of the novelty factor and the interest level and that's why that's defining a problem in a different way that was previously uh, so yeah, referrals is, is a good one and it's a little bit not quite on the basic path, it's just off a little bit. And what we do on the left hand side is, uh, you'll see here, uh, we have the three opportunities. So when we go through a session with Big Picture, if you can imagine a more elaborate version of the template with more depth and richness, uh, the same elements, but in a bigger format that you can put more onto. Imagine a set of symbols of which there are eight, including the four we've worked through. Imagine all the permutations of the template and the symbols and the types of connections and therefore prompts for conversation that happen. When all that happens on the right hand side of the page, where we end up with, where we end is we'll have a full set of challenges and opportunities all understood and agreed across the team or at least in a much richer and better form than was previously and on this left hand side we have the list of opportunities which we may use to set some criteria uh, to kind of prioritize an order uh, so anybody with a kind of business change or uh, process was mentioned in the question earlier this is back to process where we end up with the, the, the real bottom line for that business where we turn sharing useful truths into productivity is we will use that list on the left hand side to prioritize uh, maybe quantify and define a set of what we call opportunities which we then have a specialism in in turning into lasting and measured business outcomes which is a whole different step to big picture, but today's webinar was all about uh, the identification, an insight into the experience, a bit of making and doing, and the identification of a challenge or an opportunity, which you could list on the left-hand side. Is anybody willing, we're coming to a close now, time is upon us, is anybody willing to share kind of an insight into what they've done? You've had a kind of experience with that paper in front of you and you've made some notes. Is there anything that you might reflect on uh, in, in what you've created, just to give us a kind of debrief.
I think I'll share something. I think it was like what you were saying before about being able to spot patterns, just literally walking through the template bit by bit. Opportunity starts coming to mind, but it's the connections to teams and measures and, and people and, and customers that probably have, have just quickly sparked off in my brain in a way that they wouldn't if I was just kind of writing lists or um, or just thinking about things in isolation. The, 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 ex the experience of using the template itself and the visual nature of it helps me spot the patterns and the connections far quicker. Yeah. And I think that's a very human uh, trait and characteristic that we like. We're self-organizing pattern recognition. And I don't think that you have to be educated or working at a high level in a business to be able to do that. I think the shame is we don't give people the opportunity and the framework and the environment to offer that view. So what they do is they moan around the coffee machine or in the lifts to each other. We've heard the conversations going over the desk. He's not doing that. Why is he doing that? You know, you hear people talking about that work in such a uh, disenfranchised kind of way where if you offer them something that is reasonable, they pick up on that and use that as an opportunity to voice a concern, but in a much more productive environment. Uh, anybody else? One more view just before we close. I think you get to see um, the link between measures opportunities and challenges in a way that you again as sean said without writing it down in a list mm -hmm. big picture helps you connect those three things yeah. in a way that perhaps you wouldn't do ordinarily yeah I think that's pretty powerful from a facilitation perspective if you imagine what you've done there is with the paper in front of you if you imagine working in a subgroup of two or three and then having other groups around you we're back to that convergent behavior. So the converse, the thought is out there. The truth is out there. It is then shared amongst the smaller group, the bigger group. And then when you put it on the big board at the front, people are drawn to it and they're much more willing to talk it through. It's not always pretty and there are some bumps along the way because by introducing a scarcity of a small number of challenge symbols and opportunities, people are forced to naturally prioritize what we know to be always the constraint of time. And I'd love to go into it more. These are all conversation topics I'd love to follow up on. So I must thank you all for taking the time of what is late on a Friday and we'll be following up. The next steps uh, from the webinar are to, if you haven't already, look at yourbigpick.com. There is a YouTube channel which you can get to via that with our key messages which is if you need any reminder what we're all about, you can watch those. Uh, we sell programs, we sell workshops and kits, and we're looking to work with organizations who are the people first value based and willing to listen to their employees. And what we'll do is we'll have a meeting mm -hmm. with you, look at what you need to deliver, probably start off with a workshop or two, and we can grow the, uh, the work from there for lasting and measured business outcomes. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and thanks for your time, and we'll catch up soon. I've got an opportunity. I got one opportunity. I think looking at the, the gallery view, this is begging for a boy band called White Men in Glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think nice. by Monday you should have set that up, Martin. You can be you can I, be the manager. I don't think you can be the front man though. Okay. <laughs> what we need is um some a mix because I realise we're not only all male, we're all wearing glasses. I don't know because <laughs> Richard hasn't got a light. Hey. Yeah. We've got go a couple away. of rebels, re some rebels in the camp. Ooh. I'm going to get the yeah. dancing lessons booked. Thank you. We need to get Richard a light, and I think um, Gareth, and uh, well, I don't know where Ryan yeah. went. I think he's on his mobile. Anyway, we'll probably edit this bit from the crowd. But genuinely, guys, thanks so much. You know, I'm putting, you know, I'm giving it the full beans with this. This is, this is my thing. This is what I love doing, and what has been incredible for me is the amount of support and enthusiasm that I like to always offer to others when they're doing the same thing and it just grows this little community and you just don't know where it's going to head so i just always very appreciative of you all giving up your time at least an hour on a, a friday afternoon so i'll be back in touch hopefully not nagging you but uh, wishing you all well and if there's anything i can do to help you then let me know take care everybody have a good weekend thanks, thanks man. Man. Good, yeah, good, good weekend everyone bye, bye.